Welcome to the Bentec Quick Start Training Class. Before we start, we're going to go over some things that all of our customers should come to understand in order to use their software efficiently. The display area shows what we call a TriStar, which is used as a directional guide and starting point for most projects. The directions are defined as left, right, front, back, ceiling, and floor. Compared to the XYZ directional, this seems to be an easier concept for most people to understand. However, if you're used to having it another way, you can always change the look of the TriStar in the settings section if that makes you more comfortable. Pick points are used for everything. So what are they? Pick points are simply points in 3D space created by the user that are meant to define where the parts in the project will be placed. Once pick points are placed in the display area, you can build off of them by using them as reference points for other points. Most of the time, you can think of them as the end of your tape measure. Center line means exactly what it sounds like. Every line that you create in the assembly designer represents the very center of the material you're working with. Think about it like the way a wick runs through the center of a candle. The apex of the bend is really the intersection of two center lines as if there wasn't a radius. Welcome to the Bentec Quick Start training video. This class video is designed to walk the user through setting up and saving die, material, and vendor information, adjusting personal settings to the user specifications, and creating parts in the template, custom part, and assembly designers. As you go through this class, later procedures will assume that you understand all earlier procedures. Because of this, it is very important that you carefully step through this guide, understanding everything along the way. For some users, the setup process can be confusing. We are very aware that many of our customers are better at fabricating in the shop than they are at operating computers. And that's okay. We are here to help you. While this class video has its own instructions to meet its own goals in teaching you the basics to your software, the over-the-phone training class is subject to change according to the needs of the customer. With that being said, the time spent on the phone for this class is set to a 30-minute time slot so we might not be able to accommodate our whole agenda if we're taking a lot of time on a certain question or concept. However, the manner in which this 30 minutes is spent is entirely up to you. The look of your startup screen will undoubtedly look different than mine. I have access to everything the most advanced version of our software has to offer. The options that you have not purchased will be grayed out on the task menu. There may also be buttons or keys that you will not have access to. And that's okay. Start by having your Bentec software open to the task menu screen as shown here. From the task menu, open the tube library to the right. The tube and pipe library window will appear. Now select the green add new button to cause the value fields and other options to become highlighted. To indicate the type of tube you're working with, choose either the round, square, or if you have the SE version, the rectangle option from the type section. Then choose the units of measurement in the units section. Also, if you need it for your purposes, you can enter the weight per inch of your material in the weight section. Type the name of the material in the material name field. This is usually named after the diameter of the material, the thickness of the material, the die size it will match up with, or a combination of any of these. I'm using a 1.5 inch diameter material. Type the material's thickness into the thickness field on the left of the circle tube display, as well as the diameter of the material in the diameter field below the display. Use a micrometer for the thickness and a tape measure for the diameter if you're unsure. These fields require decimal numbers only, so no slashes should be used to indicate fractions. Click the Save button when your material specifications have been properly entered. The material will be saved to your material list forever or until you delete it. You can either enter all the different materials you intend on using by repeating the steps we've just taken, or click the Close button when you're finished.
From the task menu, open the die library to the right. The die library window will appear. Now you can choose the OEM list to search through a selection of dies that are already available for you, or you can set up your own on the die library main screen. Many times this OEM list will contain the die that you're looking for. For all situations when the list does not contain your specific die information, we have both a calibration wizard for our novice to intermediate users and a calibration worksheet for our intermediate to advanced users. For expert precision, you'll need to calibrate any die, whether chosen from the list or entered manually. Entering the information for your die manually is simple if you know your achieved CLR, calibrated CLR, and bend location offset information, but those numbers will only be confirmed after a simple calibration is performed. The Calibration Wizard is a step-by-step -step guide for users who have never done a calibration before and are new to tube bending or computers in general. So select the Wizard button to begin our calibration. You'll want to read the information on each page before pressing the next button. Select your style of bender from the drop-down list if it isn't already listed. Enter the CLR of the die. It will most likely be stamped on the die itself. It is roughly the distance from the center hole to the edge of the die. Now enter the outside diameter of the test material. Then cut a piece of material, roughly five times the CLR, measure it, and enter the length. Measure the tube a few inches from one end, mark it, and enter the length. Line up the mark to your designated point on your bender and bend the tube to 90 degrees. Measure the tube from the beginning of the first leg to the outside edge of the adjacent leg and enter the length. Now, measure the end of the second leg to the outside edge of the first and enter the length. The wizard will give you the information assigned to that die. So add the die and name it, preferably for its CLR and its associated material, and press OK. A window will appear notifying you that the die has been added to your library. So press OK and close the die calibration wizard window. You can now see your new die appear to the left in the die list. Now click the close button so we can start adjusting settings and options. Back at the task menu, select the settings button to the right under the library section. The options window will open displaying the general options by default. Here you can change the default items that will appear with every use of your software. So change the default material to the 1.75 DOM option and change the default die to our newly created die. Mine is 6 by 1.75 mild steel. Then select the save button. The tolerance can also be adjusted to show different decimal locations for more precision and units of measurement can also be chosen here. Always click the save button to apply the changes. Click on the Design Settings tab at the top of the window to access the Rotation section. Depending on your style of bender, you may want to change the rotation option from Incremental to Absolute. Change the dimension location in the center to accommodate either a rotary draw, rotary compression, or center compression bender. Then click Save to keep these settings. After saving, the adjustments will be applied only after restarting the software. Restart the software now to apply our changes. Back in the task menu, start by selecting the template designer icon. The new part template window will appear with the four bends option already selected by default. From there, select the double bevel hoop button at the top left to indicate the style of the part. The center line option will be selected by default. A window will appear labeled Bentech Template Part 1. Now maximize the screen 
and enter the numbers as seen here into the corresponding fields to the left of your screen. The part will then appear to the right in the display area. Now we will transfer the part out into our assembly designer so that we can assemble it together with other parts. So go up to the transfer button at the top of the screen, select it, and choose the new assembly option. The prepare for assembly window will appear. In this window, select the axis button, then the blue axis, and click the rotate button once. Then, select the axis button again, and the red axis, and click the rotate button once again. Then press OK. When the part is transferred into the assembly designer, a window will appear asking, do you wish to add this part directly into the assembly design? Select the Yes button. The part will appear in the display area, standing upright. From here, select the Pick Points tab to the left so we can create a point where another part will be anchored to. Type 36 into the light blue value field and simply click Apply. Your display should look similar to this. Once you have the part and the point 36 inches behind it, go up to the icon menu bar and select the new tube icon. When the new part window appears, select the custom part option from the list. The custom part window will open. It will be labeled Bentec Custom Part 1. From there, create another part by changing the number of bends to 2 and entering the information as seen here. Now, transfer the part out into our assembly designer so that we can assemble it together with other parts. Go up to the Transfer button at the top of the screen, select it, and choose the Existing Assembly, Assembly 1 option. The Prepare for Assembly window will appear. In this window, select the Axis button, then the blue axis, and click the rotate button once. Then select the axis button again, then the red axis, and click the rotate button once again. Now we need to change the anchor point or coupler for this part. So click on the line two points option and select the set reference button. Then select a bottom leg of the tube followed by the other bottom leg. This will draw a line along the green axis. Now select the Split in Half button and click Apply to place a point in the middle of the legs. Now in order to create this point as an anchor for transferring, click the Move button in the Change Coupler section and select the point in between the legs as a coupler. Then press OK. When the part is transferred into the assembly designer, the window will appear asking, do you wish to add this part directly into the assembly design? Select the No button this time. Minimize the custom part window and maximize the assembly from the bottom left. Select the lone pick point to set our new part there. Your display area should look like mine. From here, select the Straight button and prepare to create four straight cross sections that will connect these two parts. With the Straight button selected, start by clicking the light blue pick point located on the middle of the straight section on the leftmost leg. 
follow this step by clicking on the purple pick point located on the far left tangent of the other part. The straight button will remain selected, so start the next cross section by clicking the top left tangent pick point on the first part, and then the top left tangent pick point on the second part. They will both be purple by default. With the straight button still selected, continue by clicking the top right tangent pick point on the first part, and then the top right tangent pick point on the second part. Finish with the final cross section by clicking the light blue pick point located in the middle of the straight section on the rightmost leg, and follow it up by clicking on the purple pick point located on the far right tangent of the other part. The finished part will look exactly like this. Next, we will see how to make fish mouth cuts and notches for the intersections of the tubes we've just made. Cutting may be performed using a variety of tools. Bentec Pro and SE products give the user information on angles for cuts and cutting wrappers which are meant to be printed out and wrapped around the tube for precision cutting. Assuming the user has all the proper equipment, the software can accommodate you with everything else. Start by selecting the Cutting tab within the Assembly Designer, then click the Auto Cut button. A window will appear stating that this feature will attempt to generate any remaining cuts do you wish to continue. Select the Yes button. Notice that two cuts will appear in the cut list to the left. The rest cannot be automatically added since the tubes are cut to an arc. For these cuts, we'll need to define them manually. Clicking on the cutting information in this list will show a cutting profile in the display area. The green highlighted tube represents the tube that will be cut and the red highlighted tube represents the tube that the other will be cut to. Knowing this, go up and select the New Cut button to the left. Then, select the cross section that is closest to you in the display area and follow it up by clicking the two adjoining tubes. Once the three tubes are selected in this order, select the Complete button to create the cutting information. It will appear in the cut list to the left like the others. This will have to be done with a total of eight cuts. To view the details of these cuts, simply select one so it is highlighted and click the Details button below the list. There you will see a detailed cutting wrapper and cutting information. Close the window and select the print button below to print out a wrapper to scale. It will then be ready to be cut out and taped around the end of your tube. Now minimize the assembly window and maximize the custom part window from below. From there, the part and all its bending information will be shown at the top of the screen. This information will also appear when you maximize the other bent part in the template window. From here, you can print out the bending instructions by clicking the print icon located at the top of the screen on the icon menu bar. You can see a simulation of your part going through your bender by going to the Part Details tab and selecting the Bend Order button. From here, you can press play to start the bending simulation, manipulate the bend order, and adjust other settings to make sure your bender will not force the part to run into the ground. Thank you for participating in our Bentec 7X Quick Start training class. For further questions and comments about the class or your Bentec software, please feel free to email us at support at ben-tech.com.